Hi there, so thank you so very much for likes and comments and such. Uh, so um, today is the totem number 11, the moose, and it's a symbol for self-esteem among other things. Um, and I will read about that, but first I will uh, talk a little bit about whatever comes to my mind, but one thing I thought of was that we are all fallen angels related to self-esteem, I can take it <laughs> you know, how do I mean that? actually I have seen one person I think only one I've talked to another person well, let's say it this way I've talked, I've seen that a person like is um have angels as ancestors but according to this book of Enoch and that I haven't read it I've tried to listen to it very boring but um according to that th they weren't they were like extinct so that that shouldn't be the case obviously but I don't know what's true there or not so go into that story if you ever think of that that could be true um, but I saw that anyways with one person um, and I think this person actually had a quite a struggle between um, his strength and abilities and kind of a how can you say I shouldn't call it that I don't know like openness to darkness if you say I'm not talking about like people being evil or good or anything like that. It was like almost like a pull he couldn't resist as I felt or saw him. Wanting the the brighter things and knowing <clears throat> knowing his potential uh, abilities anyways. And in some cases I think he knew that they are stronger than others actually. Which also then gives, you know, you then have more responsibility, the more power you have and so. Anyways, I felt that I didn't know what to do with that. So I tried to ask someone else if they could maybe guide this person or teach how to um, take care of or develop these uh, abilities or so, I don't think that went well though, <laughs> but I hope you have found his way we are not in contact a lot, but yeah, I could reach out to be in touch, but yeah um, I don't know where I w why I went so far into that now but generally we all are though, I think, of it like in a if you think about a creation myth or story or so. But I also should mention the other person. I, I, talk, I did a reading for a woman who told me that someone told her that she was an angel. And she, I mean, she didn't try to boost herself, like be like <laughs> more good or anything, I don't think. It, I thought, no, I didn't think so at first. I just thought it was a positive thing when she mentioned it, that she viewed that, did view it that way. I think if she had been taught in some healing me method or something by someone who told her that she was an angel. And this totally had freaked her out for years. She was really afraid and thought that, well, if I'm an angel... Will, when I die, will I not come to the same place as my kids? And she had all kinds of fears rela related to whatever that person said to her. And so you need to be careful, I guess. Uh, most people would take it as a, a sweet thing, I guess, if someone said so. Anyway, so I tried to describe the whole um, myth about humanity as such and and how how we all have access to various levels of consciousness uh, so uh, but I think it maybe went over her head a little bit but I think it calmed her though she said so 
uh, somehow that it didn't mean in any kind of way then that she would be disconnected from her uh, loved ones though uh, yeah but what a fear to to have and go around with them and I don't know why she didn't ask that person who said it but yeah <clears throat> so well anyways Okay, I, I I didn't think that I would mention these other things here at the beginning, but okay, I will just move on now to to the whole uh, that we are all. <clears throat> if we dismiss this whole idea of these uh, more known stories about what that would mean, maybe. But in all kinds of myths, it is a similar story, though. with somewhat different words. So the way I think about it is, um, um, how can you say, if we say it this way, um, you know, there is this start story about someone would mention it as Lucifer and Diana, which then to some people mean all kinds of evil things, but more like the light and the dark there, and yeah, the wholeness really, but I won't go into that story. But if you just think about it as, um, yeah, it's it's dual though. We all know that. So we seek something else, you know, the, something other. <laughs> uh, and um, so if we think about it as, uh, I haven't prepared this as I never do. So never mind that I stray. So you know, you have heard me before. Know that I do. So don't expect anything else now. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. If we think of it as light, then as angels would be maybe considered. There are variations of those, <laughs> probably. But and oh, I need it. It's something around my neck. I <clears throat> a cold, and also I have the window open, and it's like. I don't think it's more like than 10 minus Celsius or something, but it's not hot. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah. If we think of it as uh, that sort of brightness, clear clarity, we can think of it like that. Not even uh, like color or such, but radiance maybe. I don't know what words would work for you. But then consider the opposite of whatever it is um, and how if we imagine it like angels are often described as with wings let's say and if we imagine those wings getting um, denser darker not like in, in less good but rather in density of vibration yeah and why? Be, not because of, I don't think there is any evil in this, but because we want to expand our understanding of things. We want to go out of where we haven't reached before, you know. And so, and, and maybe that is defiant if you go to the story of the Bible at least. <laughs> And you should keep yourself confined to what knowledge the authority says you are you are served, and then not uh, investigate it further. So, but if you are naughty, then and don't want to follow that sort of rule, um, that's the way it's described there. But it doesn't have to be even that. It could just be curiosity and. Uh, a willingness to embrace the wholeness of everything, you know, to see what's what's beyond the known, as I said. So, in that case, the consciousness we call we say that now and then, and those wings become a little bit denser, and so you you fall in a way down through the dimensions, which is not like 
anywhere <laughs> it's m more of a vibration um, and but you can see it easily as an image as such and how you then the more access to this more substantial let's say material the more dense we get the more we get in contact with that vibration the less we are able to hold that pure let's say or that higher clearer vibration so so we fall like maybe in not layers but like we don't like crash land <laughs> i think <laughs> i mean the con the consciousness could do that but i think it's it's more of a curiosity process where we want to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the physical which is also the in the card reading last time there it was this the seed of the root chakra the root the core um, and we want to go so so deep into this to really really uh, experience and explore it so fully so that we even forget the other not even I mean, it's it's possible to hold two perspectives at once. We all do that, but being the witness and as, as, and to what we experience at, at the same time as we do or experience something, but but also to really know what it is to be incarnated into this physical world. We need to fully go into that and forget the rest. Otherwise, we don't have that experience that we... I mean, we would have less knowledge. We would know less if we didn't have that experience too. And to do that, we need to kind of forget the other uh, parts of our consciousness. And so, then, then... It's almost like that's an easy part in a way. The whole f falling down. I think that is, yeah, I think it is like this. <laughs> but this is just in my my own um, idea of things. So don't take it as a truth or anything. But I, I kind of think of it as this. Um, <clears throat> I mean, those wings are as strong and even maybe stronger in a way, in this dimension anyway. But, you know, you just... Uh, slowly gradually come down into this space this time the, yeah time even at all and yeah you know space so um so that process is a kind of a, i think it's a, more of a fun one you know but then when we feel trapped in that when we have forgotten the rest we we realize that oh my you know all those things no, i don't have to tell the story of buddha but you know yeah sickness uh, uh, aging yeah maybe the other way around aging yeah anyways and death and so on and all kinds of stressors um and also limits which are not the case from our higher awareness uh, where we are unlimited so anyways from that since it's painful those limits if we believe them as true even more so um, and that we believe that we are contained in this that's who we are the physical this or even this just this individual and don't understand that we are more than that so that that pain will trigger us to kind of search for the things that we lost like paradise lost there <laughs> yeah oh william like anyway so but the way up as i think if think of it is almost like a rope rather we we need to pull ourselves we need need to use our own some of it c could be maybe in past lives if you believe in that and inherited and so i have a lot just I just had a lot and many do I'm not like special in that sense but it have been not very much of a struggle for me to get in touch with those dimensions harder to be rooted and physical rather um, anyway so 
the, the way up is not as easy in a, in a sense because we need to really uh, grab that rope and we need to pull ourselves we need to want to go in that direction and we need to um, you know practice study these things uh, to be able to open up these dimensions again and be aware of our true nature which are also this personality but it's not limited to that um and and to to take ourselves all the way then again up to the kind of sun or what you call it um yeah that's the path and and there is nowhere else to go whatever kind of uh, rope you use let's say it's the same it, 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 those dimensions and the directions and, and what we need to open up it's the same you know that's where we need to go to grow in awareness or r- rather in, in that case it's not about growing in awareness we always have it it's rather remembering it's a we need to do certain things to pull ourselves up to that level so to speak to remember so when we learn to to get in touch with those parts of ourselves again that that takes some effort and quite some effort uh, you know although not in a physical sense although I use those words uh, but then when you have again gotten in touch with those dimensions it's not like they still stay but they won't go away because they never did um, we are just unaware of them or we look in another direction you can say so but after a while when you got glimpses of it and then um, more and more so maybe or you, you realize how to how to get in touch with that then it's rather easy because you have methods or ways to think it's almost like tuning in a radio as some people mention it you can your consciousness can um you can get in touch with all of parts of yourself easily because you are all of yourself obviously (laughs) but otherwise you have forgotten it so therefore it's it's like you don't search for anything really because it's already there it's you are just blinded to it at the moment like and you need to have some you need to do something consciously to to get that greater understanding of who you are but it's not like um, you can avoid it either because however you do it you will you will get in touch with more and more of who you are and you you go in that direction in whatever way or path you choose and it doesn't have to be called a spiritual path even i mean all experiences will give you more and more knowledge and understanding that there is more at least and yeah i don't know if this made sense to you but i think of it that way yeah and um, and and I think of that obviously as a metaphor. It's not. It, it can't be described. I mean, it, totally as it is, like such with words, but a, a way to see it, which is uh, meaningful to me anyway. Um, and um, so, whomever. I think of it as this with other people also. Not always, though. I can admit, but when I remember to do so. I think of it as this, you know, there are those who haven't started climbing up again. They may be on their way down, so to speak, or they may be so, um, so little bit trapped, if you say, in this material way of viewing the world. They may be only focused on gain in that sense I mean that's really as in Bob Marley or I don't know those quotes come up there are those people that are so poor that the only thing they have are money you know it's like and they don't see that they don't see anything else than that and 
but it doesn't mean that I am above them in any kind of uh, ethic sense really even because this is the path for us all if I'm on my way so to speak up then I mean to towards a greater awareness I mean with that uh, then I mean at, at a certain point at least on that journey I have to realize that I'm not a higher being or have a higher consciousness I have a greater awareness of who of who I am of who they as well are you know it can't be that I am better or higher than them because then I haven't even grasped what I'm doing not the wholeness of it anyways then I still live in the separation of things um, and have and think that I many do this in, in spiritual practices they try to leave those things behind on the way they climb upwards on that so-called rope then <laughs> then they think that if I reach a certain level there the, the the things behind they will like drop or I could I could come farther and farther away from them and then then they are not mine they are not in existence anymore so there will be like eternal bliss and that and it is we all have that in our consciousness also but not I mean the awareness is to be aware of it all and if so, I would know that uh, where they are, if I'm not heading there, then I have been there. So, yeah. And if I haven't, if I think of it that way, as if I wouldn't have, have been there, then I wouldn't even know what they what what it is and where they are and how can i then judge them how can i then think that i know you know so the only way is to embrace it all yeah and and it, to me this this is oftentimes many days this is fun to me this is my fun playtime i mean i really love to do those things to to realize certain things but it's not very easy to practice especially the closer it is in the so-called real world you know um but i try my best to be more open-minded and more compassionate even when it's close even when i mean it's only then you can really practice anything it's easy to think that you should be all unconditionally loving and compassionate with if you think about something that goes on far away from you that hurts other people or whatever it is but the moment it comes close then then it triggers others other <laughs> parts and in, in yourself and you need to um, then have a strong, strong awareness, or, or consciously aim to have to be in that. So this morning I was at a coffee shop with this little uh, nephew of mine, oh, sweet one, um, and uh, there was another one there. I won't uh, define too much because. People are very sensitive sometimes about who they are, where, whatever. Anyway, so so I will just uh, keep it very brief. Um, anyways, this guy, he, yeah, okay, I could say anything there. I wouldn't say anything now, but he, uh, after a while, said my name, and I turned around. I knew who he was immediately when I saw him. But anyway, so. Then he had this tattoo of this um, so-called Iron car Cross, or it looks like those uh, Night Templars. Now that I've seen this Orn films, oh, I will put the links of a few songs, both this Snow, although it's in Swedish, and uh, also, oh, now I hear the whole, you know, Game of Thrones do 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 in my mind. Anyways, I want to see all those from the beginning, uh, but people say they are not as good at the end. So they were in the beginning but anyways okay I haven't yet done so 
but um, and also sand another also Swedish text but I just love her song some of them anyways more than others yeah but but anyways this guy had this uh, iron cross tattooed and I see that I've seen that around certain people um, yeah I won't go into more what I've seen there but I've been curious what also I've seen people wear it on their jackets or whatever. it can mean many different things I've just realized but I asked this guy anyways and he said that it was like some military symbol or something I googled it <laughs> then so it was it is that but sometimes it's also connected to those uh, uh, little bit more far a little bit more far right <laughs> yeah whatever or Nazis maybe Nazis and so I asked him, is this the Nazi symbol or something? Or, or is it? does it have that uh, meaning to you? But he said it didn't. Or rather it was about winning or what. And I said it's better to have a symbol for that than a loser symbol, right? Anyways. But um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, he, he said, don't be afraid. I just have this uh, swastika here on my other arm that I don't show. But yeah, I don't. And I said, no, no, I'm not afraid. I don't judge. I'm just curious how people think. And that's that's true. And I really try at least to be open. Not that I don't have opinions, of course, or have had even stronger opinions. It's not that my way of viewing things now is weaker. It's rather that it's rather that process that I try to describe. That we are all fallen angels. And uh, I'm not saying that he is especially fallen I, I don't mean that in any kind of way um, I don't even know he, he said he had this for, for some other purpose and he didn't think of it as a as a Nazi symbol of any kind and it probably isn't to him um, but also I think people who who are m- much to that in that, that direction aren't very open about it anyway most aren't anyway so yeah well anyway so well and I try not to to step into that ditch whomever it is honestly I don't want to I don't want to judge I want to know how I really do want to know how people think and uh, understand what their what their perspective is and where they come from even it's, if it's very difficult for me sometimes to have have a clue you know they maybe can describe it then so that I get at least what they see even if I didn't see it or if I don't even will see it then Um, but yeah I think we all are and and the moment even if we judge ourselves or if we judge others we we are not very aware Um, but I don't mean that that is like saying that everything is okay and acceptable and, um, and you know I, I'm not saying that everything is okay just because of that of course not but it is what it is anyways and, and I don't think judgments really help <clears throat> much that be- only create more conflict more conflict and more division <clears throat> and uh, um, and others can profit on that so I think we are brothers and sisters and whatever um, even no matter how far apart we are or seem to be you know yeah Shall I read about the moose, maybe? (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. I have many thoughts in my mind. 
It's a number 11 anyways. It's very beautiful. Just a number. I've fallen for this number lately a lot. <laughs> I love this number 11. And also, I'd have so many meanings, but... Um, yeah. Symbols are interesting. I've recently bought... I haven't gotten it yet, actually. It was online. Um, it's a little cheap one, but still. Um, Thor's hammer. Um, and that is sometimes also, I think, connected to those far writers, if you say. <laughs> writers. No. But anyways, um, to me, it's also... It's very much the connection to lightning and thunder to me. And I've always... I mean, I was... I've t told you about this many times before, but I, I, when it was hailstorms and that I always loved it, but that was not the, th the thing I was going to say. But I love that too. Mm, but also when it was thunder and lightning, I get get and still do get really exhilarated. I get happy by it. I get all uplifted. Uh, I love it. I love it. The closer it is, the better, and the stronger thunders I get. All I mean, I just. Uh, I just love it and um, yeah I always run after the lightning I wanted to be so close to see it it was so beautiful to me and so and I did this um, also as a child but I was then taking the bicycle around to be where, where it was the uh, where, where we saw it uh, those flashes go, gone down yeah I mean the thrill of it also it was a little bit scary but also fun you know and that but I did this when I was uh, like 22 and whatever you know I lived with a few friends in an apartment uh, I don't know exact my age I think I was like maybe in that age 23 maybe um, as I recall I wonder when I stopped it was then I must have been 24 yeah so this was right before that I recall I was running around in this little town last night where I lived <laughs> with them and uh, or it was actually with one girl at, at the time there when I lived with her and uh, when it got those bad weather as, I peop as people call it which I loved I just ran out and <laughs> around this little city in the pouring rain or whatever and, and tried to capture this uh, be close to the lightning I always did that, and they thought I was nuts. But you know, oh, I was just loved it. And so, as I told you before, uh, then there was out in my dad's place where my cats lived at the moment, where I, yeah, wasn't uh, couldn't take them where I was at the, that time um, in PTO. So, so I went there at weekends or so on and took care of my cats. And he wasn't around, and, and this was this stormy weather, and then the lightning. I was picking the phone, how could you be that stupid though? Out in the, it was not, not those uh, uh, things in, in the city there. They have these uh, uh, things that make the lightning go in another direction, you know. Um, and, and sometimes maybe they do in the countryside too, but anyways, they didn't have that, that there on that house anyway. So, for I don't think I called someone. I was just probably answering, or you know, and th didn't think it was any danger in it anyway. So, and then this uh, lightning shoot did shoot out from the the. It was those old phones. I held one part to the air, and the other one where I was speaking, it came out there. But I had it turned a little bit away from me, luckily. So, so it just uh, very, very quickly, like an instant, it moved in the in the room, like and and out through a, a one of those uh, where you put on what, what do you say electricity <laughs> those in the wall, you know. Yeah. Anyways, it was like quick flashes, and then it, it went out, um, and I stopped talking, obviously. But it, but it wasn't hurt the anything that I know. I think the phone even worked afterwards and so so maybe it was very tiny but it scared me actually so um, 
I since then I didn't want them to be closer to me anyway so uh, so, so I stopped running after them <laughs> mainly I would maybe I had now but yeah so I feel it uh, it's it's suitable to have one of those still I think yeah. I also you know when it comes to those uh, who talk about gods and goddesses and all that I I have a strong connection to even to Freya and uh, have had always to her um I haven't worked with these the the Norse ones so much but um those Scandinavian deities but I like them and uh, she gave me a wand once and people were very surprised. And I said, oh, I know she will give me one. And they thought I would break one, you know. Oh, no, she will. And the second after it was just hanging there for me. <laughs> like, it was very beautiful. Anyways, um, even that, I think, uh, I believe in those, I mean, the consciousness, in the, yeah, the universal consciousness, but also these stronger forces of nature, like Thor and so. And I think he's very protective of me. <laughs> so yeah so I want that hammer uh, so if you want to if you have any strong connections to yourselves to the nature specific things in nature or deities or so on you can write anything in my comments obviously and I probably won't read them <laughs> but if I do uh, anyways it could be fun for others to read maybe maybe you can connect with each other at least um, and and the moose not the least you know I grew up in this little uh, village like 200 households always out walking with the dogs or out playing in the woods and so to meet a moose was nothing odd it was like normal at the time even closely sometimes they were like uh, also I think we had very kind mooses because when I was around I guess uh, oh, mm, like around you know, 2000 I was getting like 30 <laughs> I lived in Kungel and I was going from Kungel to, to be there uh, I was walking there and there was this um, like uh, um, like uh, what what is it called when it's open space anyways it was trees and stuff other at other places but it went this like a field yeah or or of maybe it was a uh, something that it was closed and it closed anyways to those uh, where they had cows and stuff or so um, anyways it was this moose f kind of far up in the there on the field there uh, quite far away though as I mean compared to what I was used to so I wasn't really afraid and I was like stepping a little bit closer because I love I love mooses they are so lovely and beautiful and so um, I did I mean I was on the walking path so I didn't like go out in the towards it like such but even that and even that I stopped that moose got so pissed at me I mean it started jumping towards me and like coming walking like you know they're quite powerful and huge some of them or most of them and I, and, I came, and I started to walk very fast and he was really like you know angry at me but he I, I guess he stopped I didn't look back um but those that I was used to, maybe they were used to us too, because in the woods where we were playing, also as quite kind of small kids alone, and so they they never bothered really. They were like a few trees away, and they when they w came across you, they would just like with their long legs, like slowly go away because they didn't want to kind of be very close. But still, they. They weren't all that bothered, and usually, uh, at the time, I used to stop them and wait so that I wouldn't scare them or m make them disturbed. And so, yeah, but uh, and usually you could smell them ahead of time, also, if if the wind was right, anyways. And the dogs usually 
would find them early. I mean, they would, and even the mooses would know that if the, if the dogs were with you, so they wouldn't show themselves usually then. But uh, yeah, so. But lovely, lovely creatures. I can't, I can't stand. It was recently also a person I grew up with there. Actually, we were out there much. She lives in south of Sweden now, and she was hunting those wild boars. And I, I don't say anything about people wanting to hunt. Uh, I could, uh, part of me, not that I would want to kill animals much, but the whole shooting thing I could find. I mean, I would love to shoot at a target, not like a living target. I mean, I mean just, just, just the shooting part itself. It could uh, be fun, I think. But, um, um, but anyways, so. She just the other day she had I mean I think she just recently had uh, learned this or so but she it was a, apparently a great shot perfect and everything that's good so they don't suffer but why do they have to have those images up on your like on your Facebook with the dead animal laying there same with those with mooses and so on why what's the point I don't get it. If they need to show you that it's huge, for example, when it comes to the moose, they could just um, take a picture of their uh, antlers or something then. For the bragging part, I, I think it's horrible. I really think it's, uh, to me, it is. Maybe it's because I'm a vegetarian, I mean, I eat fish sometimes, but but I mean, I don't know, I, I can't stand it. I don't even understand, I don't understand it. I try to <laughs> said about this whole <laughs> and and sometimes uh, maybe you think you are very e elevated and they are more so than you more part of this wholeness and the nature and everything and the rhythm of it and and protecting the balance I don't know whatever but when it comes to moose though well I stick my neck out a little bit here I know but I've said it before but I've learned that the reason they don't want wolves mainly is because the wolves take the moose that they want to shoot so it's rather this interest and this hobby to shoot the 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 joy of the kill the killing that would be taken away it's not that there will be lack of of uh, moose meat i don't think that's what people would uh, suffer from or feel that they would it's just this whole, the kind of the need to kill this. And so therefore they can't have wolves because they do the natural thing and take their prey. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> because sometimes, they, I mean, those who hunt and so talk about that, like as they need to do that, otherwise there would be like overwhelmingly many mooses in the woods. But thing is, you very rarely, I mean, sometimes you see a moose nowadays too, but when I was young and a kid, they were quite frequent. They were, you, you saw them often and uh, never almost now. So, and also there is not a, as much forest, woods for them. They, they chop it down, so... Yeah. Okay. That spiraled down. <laughs> well, I I admire these animals. I admire all the wild animals. I must say, it's just amazing that they they live just by themselves. You know, they survive all whether it's bears or lynx or foxes or whatever, even the birds or whatever. It's just fascinating that they just do their thing and they don't depend on us they have their it's like very magical to me and so I think we should protect them and they are also protectors of us whether we know it or not okay okay this was long and rambly one <laughs> so to the whole now moose 11 self-esteem Moose, help me to honor the gifts I can give and recognize my worthiness long as I live. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. 
Moose is found in the north of the medicine wheel, as is buffalo. North represents the place of wisdom. Self-esteem is the medicine of moose because it represents the power of recognizing that wisdom has been used in a situation and that recogni uh, recognition or a pat on the back is deserved. This is the third time it was this whole pat on the back. This was recent also. <clears throat> Moose is the largest member of the deer family and has great strength. The call of the male moose is an awesome thing to hear on a musky spring night. His pride in his maleness and his desire to share his seed with the moose cow are displays of his self, sense of self-esteem. The bellow of a male moose can be viewed as a positive force since it represents his willingness to tell the world about his feelings. Oh wow, this is so beautiful. Um, this tell the world trait contains joyfulness which only comes with a sense of accomplishment. There is no greater joy than a job well done. This trait is therefore not a seeking of approval, but rather an enjoyment of sharing because of the spontaneous explosion of joy that comes from the deepest part of one's being. The wisdom woven throughout this scenario is that creation constantly brings forth new ideas and further creation. Moose is telling us that joy should be shouted with pride. The wisdom in doing this shouting is that the joy is catching in a sense, the bellowing is a way for all of us to lighten up and give ourselves or each other a well done. Moose medicine people have the ability to know when to use the gentleness of deer and when to activate the stampede of buffalo. They understand the balance between giving orders to get things done and having a willingness to do things themselves. The wisdom of moose medicine is akin to the great father warrior who has long since put away his war paint and is now advising the young bucks to cool their blood. Moose medicine is often found in elders who have walked the good red road and have seen many things in their earth walk. Their joy lies in being the teachers of the children and in being the first ones to give encouragement. This is not to say that moose medicine people do not use their wisdom to warn as well as to give praise, because they do. Moose medicine people know what to say, when to say it, and to whom. The elders are honored in tribal law for their gifts of wisdom, for their teaching abilities, and for their, the calmness they impart in counsel. If you are wise beyond your years and have the gift of moose medicine, use this gift to encourage others to learn and grow. There are many facets to the wisdom of moose medicine. If you have chosen the moose, the number 11 here then, you have reason to feel good about something you have accomplished on your journey. This may be a habit you have broken, a completion of some sort, an insight on a goal, or a new sense of self that you have fought hard to earn. It is a time of feeling harmonious pride and of recognizing those who I aided you in the process. One good exercise in moose medicine is to write down things that you can love about yourself and your progress in life. Then apply these same things to friends, family, co-workers and life. Don't forget to share the findings with others. They need the encouragement as much as you do. And then if you have blocked it, this or not embraced this medicine. If so, you are being reminded that ego can ruin your sense of accomplishment. Remember that others have the same potential you have and do not become careless in your appreciation of their gifts. Reversed moves, then, as it's called here, implies that in tooting your own horn you have failed to be interested in others and have therefore forgotten that everyone teaches everyone else in some way. Contrary moves medicine may be asking you to grow quietly for a while, to calm your spirit and allow the strength and wisdom of silence to enter your heart. This is the core of moose medicine, knowing the wisdom of silence, so that when it's proper to speak, you can take pride in your words. Wow, that was strong and magical, right? I also mentioned that I 
do the which is in in Munaki, the Med North and the Hummingbird, where that is one thing. But I like to do this video, so I keep talking. <laughs> but being quiet, oh, it's a good thing, though. Yeah. Mm. And also, I do on Facebook pick cards and lay cards every week and so on. So maybe I realize you appreciate that quite some of you. Here, I mean, so maybe I should uh, do that more. Um, we will see. But I, I recognize your likes, and I see at least how many comments there are, or something. But uh, yeah, so we will see where I go with that. But take care, and I hope you. I gave you something today, and uh, let's talk soon. Bye for now.